X Talks connects professionals in the life science, medical device, and food industries with useful content like webinars, job openings, articles, and virtual meetings to help you succeed in your career. This food industry focused podcast brings together some of our editorial staff to share insights into the latest B2B industry news to help keep you up to date. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the X Talks Food Podcast. I'm Sydney Perlmutter, Senior Food Industry Journalist and Webinar Moderator at Xtalks.com, and this week I'm joined by Vera Kovacevic. Thank you so much for coming today. So I'm going to start us off with a story about Stop Food Waste Day, and this happened last week on April 24th, and it marks a significant international day of action dedicated to combating food waste, of course. And this initiative was launched only a few years ago in 2017 by the Compass Group, and it emphasizes the crucial role of corporations in the food industry in addressing food waste. With roughly one third of all food products globally lost or wasted, the food industry is pivoting towards sustainable practices aimed at curbing these losses. So on Stop Food Waste Day 2024, Compass Group's efforts will be highlighted prominently, and it kind of has to because it is the one that started this day. So having set a precedent with a commitment to cut food waste by 25% by 2020, the company continues to lead by example, and its strategies include comprehensive waste tracking and the donation of surplus food to local banks, which not only combats waste, but also addresses food insecurity. And like the Compass Group, the food industry as a whole has adapted several innovative strategies to tackle food waste, transforming from merely managing waste to preventing it at the source. So we'll talk a little bit more about what various food industry um, sectors are doing to uh, sort of curb food waste first with tech-driven solutions. So tech companies are leading the charge by creating software and systems that help restaurants and food producers optimize their industry. And of course, um, you know, a few podcasts ago, we talked about um, Too Good to Go, which also helps consumers contribute to, um, you know, stopping food waste. But these other tools predict purchasing needs and they can track food food usage, which over time minimizes overordering and overproduction of food. So a notable example that I came across was a company called LeanPath, and it's a tech firm that provides food waste tracking systems, enabling kitchens to monitor and reduce waste effectively. Next is supply chains. So grocery chains are also revising their supply chain practices. For instance, Walmart, which is the world's biggest retailer, has implemented a robust uh, program that focuses on improving the efficiency of its supply chain from farm to shelf. And this includes better forecasting demand, improving transportation methods, and using blockchain technology to track produce freshness. And these efforts not only reduce food waste, but also ensure that perishable items are managed more effectively. Next, some upcycling. Um, so upcycling, which means turning you know, byproducts or waste materials into new high quality products is another innovative approach uh, that's been gaining traction over the years. So companies like Regrained use spent grains from beer brewing to create nutritious snack bars. And this not only reduces waste, but also adds economic value to what would have otherwise been discarded. Next, restaurants. So some restaurants are uh, reevaluating portion sizes, with many opting to offer smaller dishes to more closely match consumer eating habits. And this not only meets customer demand for healthier eating options, but also significantly cuts down on the leftovers diners leave behind. Next, hospitality. So the hospitality sector, which includes hotels and resorts, is also making substantial strides by implementing programs that analyze and improve food prep and consumption patterns. Several major hotel chains are adopting practices like preparing smaller batches of food more frequently throughout the day to ensure freshness and reduce leftover quantities. So, um, you know, with the food waste day now behind us, the food industry's role in mitigating it is more critical than ever. And the ongoing efforts across various sectors demonstrate a collective commitment to sustainable practices that not only benefit the environment, but also improve economic efficiencies and food security. And this year's Stop Food Waste Day it was certainly a call to action for the industry to innovate further, share successful strategies, and continue to foster a culture of sustainability. Uh, so, you know, often when we think about food waste, I feel like sometimes the, the, the blame 
is 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 focused a little bit maybe too much on the consumer when I feel like it should certainly be um, you know a more holistic approach to food waste. Of course, as consumers, there are things we can do, um, but I think overall, it's the industry that is certainly. Uh, contributing to food waste the most. But, um, you know, with that said, I think a lot of these ways that I mentioned um, can really help cut down on food waste. So Vera, what do you think about like, you know, more newer solutions like tech and, um, you know, AI maybe being involved in, in food waste? Do you think that these can really substantially make a difference and cut down maybe that one third uh, stat that I was talking about? Yeah, for sure. I think so. I think um, it's just easier to analyze data in general with AI and tech. And I think like it can help um, people see patterns faster and more efficiently. And then it can help um, companies with their decisions, like not just purchasing decisions, but restaurants as well and then hotels. Um, so I think AI can help, but I, I don't think AI by itself is going to do all of the work of actually mitigating food waste, mm-hmm. right? I think it. I think a lot of the food waste comes from um, just corporations, and you know, I, I think the restaurant industry is probably not a big contributor to food waste, in my opinion. I think a lot of people pack, uh, get oh, yeah. their food packed, yeah. right? If they can't finish it, mm-hmm. then they eat it at home. Mm-hmm. So I don't think the restaurant industry here is the big player at all. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to ask you, like, who do you think out of the list? Who do you think is the biggest contributor to food waste in the entire food industry? Is there oh, one man. sector? Uh, maybe not sector. I'm trying to think of where along the supply chain is the most food wasted. Um, and if I had to guess, oh boy, that's tough. I was I was going to say retail, and it probably yeah. is retail, and then that's why companies like Too Good to Go exist. But you know, that's we're already at the consumer level at this point, so now it's sort of on consumers to save food that can be wasted. And I also imagine a lot of food is wasted during transportation, um, mm-hmm. you know, or gets damaged mm-hmm. or is is deemed. Um, not good anymore. Um, And something that was brought to light to me recently was how much food could potentially be wasted um, during recalls. So yeah, yeah. So I recently attended a food safety conference and spoke with a company that um, tried to save foods that would otherwise be wasted due to recalls. So what they do is they will get shipments of food um, that was deemed, uh, you know, it's susceptible. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it was, uh, there might've been a a tiny contaminant in it. Um, or they're not sure if they're they're not sure exactly. So they will, um, you know, ensure that it is safe and then give it back to the, not give it back, but, you know, allow it to be sold safely again. So that was another um, area that food can certainly be wasted in. And I understand it's out of an abundance of safety, but, you know, if it has, if, if it's cleared, then I think it should definitely be, be sold. Yeah. Yeah. You could run into some legal troubles if they miss something, but <laughs> that's for sure. True. Yeah, <laughs> that's a risky business. Mm-hmm. Now that I think about it, you got to be very careful. Yeah, and I think a lot of um, you know food food safety um, and food. I, I mean, food. A lot of food can be wasted out of um, you know safety concerns, and I think the the pandemic really highlighted that. Yeah. Um, and people were worried about the transmission through food as well. Um, also adjacent to food is like food packaging as well. So, you know, the practice of sort of bringing your own cups or, you know, things to coffee shops, that kind of ceased because of COVID. So often I think sustainability and um, safety can't really coincide sometimes, you know, especially with food, people get worried. And I totally understand why, but I think we have enough food in the world to feed everyone. It's just the way that the system is right now isn't often optimal, um, you know, to get it to everyone that needs it. So I really hope that, you know, this day is not just a day, you know, but it extends, it extends. Um, and I really, yeah, I, I hope that food companies and, and all these tech can help save food that would otherwise go to waste. Yeah, I was just thinking about, again, about like the retail sector and how much food gets wasted there. And I remember, I think when the pandemic started and, you know, I was reading some facts or or whenever you watch like an apocalypse style movie and then they're like, OK, so 
the food that you have right now in the grocery stores in your community, how long can it feed the community for? And everybody yes. says like three days, mm. right? And or around, you know, a few days only. So I'm wondering, like, how much food is actually being wasted from the retail store, if that's true? Right. And is it only like specific types of food that they don't sell well in a certain location? Maybe they could use AI to like better assess purchasing um, decisions at different locations, you know, and try to better distribute food. Because ultimately, I think a lot of food gets just thrown away from the um, retail side. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, you know, they'll try to and it works on me. I'm always incentivized with a discount if it's going bad tomorrow or is going yeah. bad today or something. Everyone yeah. is incentivized with with a discount. And I think um, sometimes they don't really like make it clear that there's like a discount there or it'll just be like a little sticker on the mm -hmm. and you don't really may not notice mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so I wonder if there can be like sometimes they'll have sections of the grocery store I know it's usually in produce like they'll have it on one cart and it's like oh this is going oh back. yes the scary cart yeah the scary cart <laughs> with like flies buzzing around <laughs> you're like stuff. the bananas are yeah. gone like going They're dark for banana bread <laughs> yeah but I wish that they could have more of those for like other types of food like even yeah. even packaged you know yeah. Yeah. Frozen food as well. Right. I'm sure that has an expiry date. Oh yeah, right? it certainly does. It certainly um, does. Mm -hmm. But I really only notice that mostly for like produce. Yeah, yeah. I guess, and and sometimes it's it's not even on sale. I mean, I'll pick something up and it expires tomorrow, and I'm like, where's my discount? Yeah, on this? <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to get rid of it. So don't, don't you want to get rid of it? <laughs> yeah, I feel like they they should organize a little bit better in the retail store, like where to go to find. Mm food that's packaged though or frozen but that's you know has an expiry date and I don't know I feel like the retail stores themselves could be a little bit more organized instead of having to rely on companies like good, too good to go mm -hmm. to set that up for them it's mm -hmm. kind of you know they should start at the retail store and I'm sure it would sell out and people would eat it I'm sure it would and I mean I would think that they at the retail level are incentivized to do so as well right. to save any of the funds but I don't know, maybe they don't see it that way. They don't see it as being worth it to put more effort into, um, you know, sections like that. But, you know, Walmart makes a lot a lot of money. But I'm glad they're at least doing something to sort of analyze trends and, and you know, to try and cut down on, on food waste. But So final question, in your opinion, do you think food waste is being minimized with each passing year or do you think it's a growing problem? Well, that's a good question. That's a very good question. I mean, aside, like I'd have to look at the stats to know that for sure. Yeah. But I would say in the last, I'd say in the last 10 years, I would hope that it's, I would hope that it's gone, gone Less down. of a problem. You become okay. less of a problem or that we found more ways to, to deal with it. Um, at least in the city. Yeah, exactly. Because that one third stat has been around for so long. Um, Mind me, what's that stat? The stat is that one third of all food produced is wasted. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is so daunting. Like yeah. that's global as well. So, I would hope that um, you know these tech, which are touted, you know, as like major game changers, right. can actually change this game. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. See with AI. Yeah. Out. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. That was a big topic at this conference. Everyone was saying AI was like the next right. big thing. And yeah. that was in reference to food safety, but you know, it has a lot to do with, with food waste as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So next story I'm going to talk about is a little bit of a, a downer, but certainly something that, um, you know, we, we need to talk about. Um, at this point, most global food companies acknowledge that farm animal wel welfare is a key concern, but tangible improvements for the most part, remain elusive. Now, the Business Benchmark on Farm Animal Welfare, um, or BBFAW, recently evaluated 150 prominent food companies and assigned the majority of uh, the, and assign the majority a low performance impact rating due to their poor animal wear, welfare practices. So the revamped BBFAW report introduced stricter criteria for focusing on actual welfare outcomes. A substantial investor coalition managing assets of $2.3 uh, trillion dollars plans to discuss these findings with various food companies to encourage better practices. So Nikki Amos, BBFAW's executive director, explained in a press release that investors rely on the BBFAW report to assess how companies manage business risks and opportunities linked to farm animal welfare. And this factor is becoming increasingly crucial for those with investments in the food sector. 
Investors use these insights to make informed decisions and fulfill their stewardship duties by encouraging companies to adopt recommended practices from the BBFAW assessments. They also band together to address concerns about companies um, about a company's poor farm animal welfare standards and push for systematic improvements. So let's talk a little bit about the current state of farm animal welfare. So approximately 95% of food companies worldwide recognize farm animal welfare as a central business issue. But despite this, none of them have reached tier one leadership status in the BBFAW rankings. So uh, Marks and Spencer, Premier Foods, and Weight Rose are among the highest ranked, but overall 93% of companies have received poor ratings, indicating a lack of protection for animals against harmful practices like close confinement or routine mutilation. Many of the largest food companies, including Mars, Mondelez International, and Starbucks, show no evidence of farm animal animal welfare on their business agendas with tier six ratings. Companies like Domino's Pizza and Yum China Holdings are yet to even publish a formal farm animal welfare welfare policy. Amos highlighted uh, two main hurdles to achieving progress, the time and investment required to fulfill commitments, as well as the complexity of implementing welfare improvements across global supply chains. Seems kind of like excuses to me. Um, But the BBFAW noted that animal welfare regulations play a crucial role in setting minimum standards, but these laws vary widely and are not uniformly enforced. So companies are therefore encouraged to adopt comprehensive policies that exceed these minimum requirements to just ensure consistent standards across all markets. And consumers and businesses... um, Sorry, and consumer and business customers also uh, significantly impact how companies manage animal welfare, driving the need for companies to better educate the public on these issues. So the latest BVFAW report now also evaluated how companies are are adapting to reduce um, reliance on animal sourced foods and shift towards alternative proteins. And about 25% of assessed companies acknowledge the importance of this shift with firms like Care4 and Greggs setting specific targets. Since its inception in 2012, the BBFAW has been the foremost has been the foremost global evaluator of farm animal welfare policies and practices, which is supported by Compassion and World Farming, Four Paws, and a coalition of investors. And recently, animal protection group. Um, Groups have called for uh, the EU to stop livestock exports by sea, highlighting significant welfare risks to both animals and crew. So, yeah, not a very happy story, but something that certainly needs to be highlighted. I mean, I, in particular, was very surprised to learn that 93% of companies received poor ratings. And we're not talking like rinky-dink operations here. We're talking Mars, Mondelez International, and Starbucks. So we're talking really big companies. So Vera, do you agree with me that, um, you know, the the uh, hurdles in achieving progress, like the time and investment um, and the complexity, do those sound, of, sound a bit like excuses to you? I think that it's... Um Those are excuses for sure. However, I think they should have made it more clear that, look, like we're Starbucks, like we don't operate our own farms. We Mm. buy it from the farmers or, right? They don't have their, Starbucks doesn't own any of these farms. No, I guess they have just chosen to partner. Chosen, yeah, right. right. They have chosen Mm -hmm. who to partner with. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess maybe a little bit of the accountability is on them, but (laughs) even that doesn't mean that you still don't take initiative to help your partner improve and mm-hmm. so you can both get a really high score mm-hmm. right and and just for ethical reasons right. as well like not not just it's not about the score and who's ranked well and, and who's not it's more like you want to make sure that you're ranked well of course yeah yeah and i'm surprised that big names like starbucks i'm kind of disappointed with them because they usually They are, you know, known to encourage like, oh, sustainability initiatives and, you know, you know, bring your own cup and and things like that. Meanwhile, like they have a low, was it a low performance score? Yeah, Yeah. they do. Um, So that's not good. mm -hmm. They're worried about ethical and environmental concerns. Like this should be one of them that they're focusing on. And you're right. Now that I think about it, like the time investment and complexity that's kind of an excuse because they have the staff to help them make better selection decisions about who to outsource mm-hmm. from, right? They can just easily 
go to a farm that has that's well known to mm-hmm. to have a good animal welfare, mm-hmm. um, right? So yeah. that's this kind of an excuse. It's not like they're the farmers themselves, and and they got to right. implement so many different <laughs> operations now to improve, you know, their cattle or or whatever they're doing. It's like you no, you just cancel a contract, start a new one, right? And and I know, yeah. I mean, it it, it does sound a bit daunting, but I think like often consumers like you and I, um, you know, are targeted and some t- that eat meat at least are, are targeted sometimes of like, oh, just become a vegan. There won't be any, um, you know, animal welfare issues if everyone stopped eating meat. But I think that is just like the same thing as like, oh, if you don't want to get hurt, then don't do X. You know, it's, it's kind yeah. of like there's, there's a much bigger issue to tackle here. Plus, you're never going to get everyone to stop eating meat. That's just not going to happen. So knowing that, I think there needs to be changes within companies because, you know, we don't want to also feel bad about um, eating something where we know that the animals were, were treated poorly, right? Like, yeah. we, we don't want that. And then we also don't want to, like, pay a premium for animals that are treated well because it, right. it, it you know. It should it, be standard. It should be standard, exactly. But often, you know, uh, higher price tags are associated with, like, uh, cage-free eggs or, yes. like, you know, chickens and roosters and whatnot that had a happy life like it's <laughs> and and that you're right I agree like it, it should just be the standard but you know people will pay a premium because they feel they feel badly about it so are there, are there are eggs in the grocery store that they advertise themselves that way uh not that they lived happy lives <laughs> but cage-free eggs are often or cage-free um that's chickens a, that's or a thing it is a thing yeah it's cage a thing free chickens it's debatable um you know you'd really have to look into the specific company and the farm itself to, to know how much more ethical it is than, than other eggs. But yes, there, there are um, eggs. I'm not sure about meat. We often see like um, grass-fed uh, beef as, as being at a higher premium um, and dairy products that are associated with grass-fed um, cows as well um, yeah. can often be at a premium. Um, and I don't know whether that's due to quality or whether that's due to, you know, they, they did have a better life or have a better life. Maybe both. I think a bit of both. Yeah. I think a bit of both. I think if, yeah, if you are treated well as an animal, you're probably going to be tastier. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I think so. Maybe. If you're not pumped full of like... I don't know like, if it's, uh, I, I don't know if we can taste the difference. Right. But, <laughs> but, but there are so many, I, I noticed like there are a lot of marketing efforts that... Around that? Uh, yeah, around that, making people... Uh, believe that you know our animals were treated with the utmost respect and dignity Mm. and you'll be able to taste it and you know whether or not we actually do taste it we believe in it we buy into it right yeah yeah Mm -hmm. I think most people would I I think so too I think so too I think we just know as a whole whether it's meat or 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 not you know, if we're not growing the food, if we're not involved in, in every step of the process, we really don't know. Like, there is a lot of mystery sometimes in what we eat. We hope that it's always safe, but we don't always know whether, you know, the animals yeah. were treated well, the people involved were treated That's well. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So instead of companies like Starbucks, mm-hmm. um, what were the other two? Uh, the other two were... Um, Ma- Mars and Mondelez International. Okay, so instead of them complaining how that's too much work, extra work for them, it's too complex, mm-hmm. in your opinion, like, what should they be saying instead? Like, what should they actually be saying? Like, how can they get a better score? What it, What does it take? I think it takes, like, what you were saying. I mean, they need to just do... Th- they're going to have to spend more money, I think. I think they're going to have to spend more money in partnering with, um, you know, better you know, better farms, they're going to also just have to, like, look into more options. I also don't think that, like, uh, cutting, like, wanting to get a better score, so therefore you stop selling uh, meat products and invest solely in, like, alternative meats. Um, Yeah, it'll do it to an extent, but I don't think that's, like, the only solution. Um, no, they also want to cater to people. Of course, who of drink course, they'll milk, be losing. Right, milk, they'll yeah. be losing a lot yeah. of their existing. Yes. So um, that's not the only. Yeah, it's not the one, only. Solution. That's a part of the solution. It's a part of it, but yeah, it's certainly not the only solution. I think just more, and I think they should also be including um, animal welfare pl- like plants in their like sustainability reports, because right. I think it. I think it does certainly uh, fit into the sustainability category. Um, 
And I also, this isn't specifically with the companies, but there, there, there just needs to be better, like, and more clear laws around this stuff. Yes, yeah. And if there aren't, then they, they or if there already are, they need to actually be enforced, yes. right? Because I often wonder, I, I wonder, like, how do these farms get away with it, right? I don't know. You know? It's just uh, lower audits on them, mm, I guess. Mm-hmm. From a... F- FDA audits the food companies, but then who audits it's the, the USDA? Farms? It's the USDA that that. Do they have enough uh, employees to go around? I don't think they them? do. I don't think they do. So that's what I'm saying. It's such a like systemic issue that like yes, there are certain companies to blame and that could be doing better, but like yeah. it it goes so far. There's so, so far many back. layers. There's so many layers. Yeah. yeah, and like I was saying, like we don't want to feel guilty about what we eat. You know, we don't. So. There's plenty of other things to do. Exactly. I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the end of this episode of the X Talks Food Podcast. If you like today's show, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Thanks, everyone, and see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the X Talks Food Industry Podcast. If you enjoyed our discussions today, please share the episode with your friends and colleagues and be sure to subscribe in order to be notified when a new episode is released. To join in on the discussion, you can find X Talks on social media, email podcast at xtalks.com or comment on the articles directly. Links are in the show description. Take a moment to join our community at xtalks.com to get access to everything we have to offer, including webinars, job listings, virtual meetings, articles, and more. The views and opinions expressed in the podcast are those of the speakers sharing them. They should not be taken as professional advice and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position Honeycomb Worldwide. For further information, email us at podcast at xtalks.com. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.